God, I know. <laughs> it's not enough, is it? Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the most rewatched Big Bang Theory moment of every season. Are you talking to me? Is there another Benny here? Penny, aren't you gonna draw something? Relax, we got time, this is so fun. <laughs> it's Mrs. Wallowitz, uh, loving mother to all of us. For this list, we'll be looking at those funny, sweet, most memorable moments from the long-running sitcom, the one that stands out the most from each season. What moments do you find yourself re-watching over and over and over again? Let us know in the comments. Season 12, The Elevator Works. Sheldon, that was really rude. I'm sorry. Amy is the one constant I can count on, and now she's changing. It's just a haircut and some clothes. No, it's the last straw. I can't take anymore. Heading into the final few episodes of the series, there were probably three things that fans were hoping for. We all wanted Sheldon and Amy to win the Nobel Prize, we wanted to figure out Penny's last name, and we wanted that broken elevator to work again. <laughs> Can you believe it? They finally fixed the elevator. <laughs> While two out of three ain't bad, and the revelation of the latter was definitely the most memorable moment of the entire final season. What do you think? Wanna give it a try? When those elevator doors opened up and Penny was standing there, it was a moment literally 12 seasons in the making. As actress Kaylee Cuoco recalled, even the studio audience, quote, screamed for like five minutes when it happened. You know, the elevator did work when I moved into the building, so going up and down the stairs was a change. Which means this would actually be a return to the status quo, but conversely, Get I in! think- Get in! Season 11, Relaxed Sheldon. We caught a little glimpse of what a laid-back, go-with-the-flow Sheldon might be like when he couldn't get a haircut and he played bongos back in season five. Penny meant if he were a purple leprechaun, Penny forgot to use the subjunctive. But that was just the tip of the iceberg compared to the beach-going, cornet-playing, whatev-saying Sheldon that Amy discovers next to her in bed when the stress of wedding planning has him talking in his sleep. Yeah, you know, what if. <laughs> what, Ev? I like this side of you. You know what I like? Smooth jazz. Because Sheldon is always so straight-edged and intensely unrelaxed, whenever we see him let loose in any way, be it with the help of alcohol or in his sleep, it's always very funny and very rewatchable. We don't need GPS. Let's just see where the road takes us. <laughs> I see why you turned it off. That guy sounds like an idiot. <laughs> Season 10, Sheldon Proposes. Will you marry me? One of the great things about much of the Amy-Sheldon relationship is how unpredictable it was. When Sheldon announced he was going to have coitus with Amy, who saw that coming? Okay, well, what's the third option? Wait, that I have coitus with her. Before that, when Amy broke up with him and we found out he had an engagement ring, you could hear the shocked surprise from the studio audience. But when Ramona Nowitzki kisses Sheldon and he walks out of the office in season 10, who would have guessed that he was on his way to propose to Amy? Obviously, it isn't a surprise anymore, but this is still a great scene, and one we're sure we aren't the only ones re-watching over and over again. Season 9, Penny and Leonard's Vegas Wedding. This was the wedding over eight seasons in the making. From the very first moment that Leonard laid eyes on Penny in the pilot, we'd been waiting for this. Before I go any further, have either of you prepared your own vows? Yes. No. It didn't exactly happen the way fans expected, and it wasn't the way Penny and Leonard anticipated either, but that's also what makes it so rewatchable. You got troubles? I got them too. <laughs> there isn't anything I wouldn't do for you. We stick together and we can see it through, because 
you've got a friend in me. <laughs> the couple even puts the Leonard kissed another girl revelation aside, well, at least until after their vows. As for the moments during the ceremony itself, it's all about the two of them, their love for each other, and Toy Story. Is that the song from Toy Story? He loves that movie. I do. <laughs> Season 8, Howard's Mother Dies. Yeah, you okay? No. What's wrong? My mom died. Audiences only knew her as a loud, off-screen voice, but Mrs. Wallowitz was also a huge part of the show for more than seven seasons. Who's on the phone? It's Leonard! Why is he calling? Sheldon's sick! Were you playing with him? <laughs> and of everything that happened in season eight, it's hard to imagine anything more memorable, rewatchable, and sad than when Howard found out that his mom had passed away. That was my aunt. Ma took a nap. She never woke up. <laughs> the scene is also memorable for Sheldon being the one to say the most meaningful and touching thing. When I lost my own father, I didn't have any friends to help me through it. You do. How many of you were like Penny and expected him to say something inappropriate? How many of you still expect it every time you rewatch it? I really thought he was going to say, let it go. <laughs> Season 7, If I Didn't Have You. Well, tonight is the anniversary of our first date, and I wanted to celebrate it by writing a song for you. There are a few things a guy can do that are more romantic than writing a song for the woman he loves. In season seven, Howard Wallowitz celebrates his and Bernadette's first date anniversary, while also banking some brownie points for the next horrible thing he does with Bernadette's song. Ever since I met you, you turned my world around. You supported all my dreams and all my hopes. You're like Uranium-235 and I'm Uranium-238, almost inseparable isotopes. If I Didn't Have You is a sweet, romantic, and super catchy tune that wins us over every single time we watch it. I couldn't have imagined how good my life would get from the moment that I met you, Bernadette. And it's way more romantic than the sorry for proposing sweet Bernadette song he wrote for her in season three. Although Bernie was surprisingly impressed by that one as well. Bernadette. You found it creepy, but that's just the kind of thing I do. Whoa. Season six, game night. Gift a present! Present! Yeah! Uh, season six had many candidates for this spot on our list, including Sheldon faking a wormhole to mess with Howard and Raj. But while Sheldon is adept enough to create a fake video of himself being attacked by an alien via an interstellar wormhole, he can identify a simple drawing of a chocolate chip cookie. It's an observational rebuttal of the Lambda CDM model of the universe. No. It's a chocolate chip cookie, yes! <laughs> Which brings us to game night and Sheldon and Leonard losing to Amy and Penny over and over and over again. A hand, a nail, a polish? Yeah! <laughs> It never gets old watching Sheldon overcomplicate the word present in Pictionary, or Leonard trying to find Waldo without his glasses on. Oh, there he is! I got him! Yes! Oh, he went again! How could you not find him? Because he's hard to find. If it was easy to find, the books would be called There's Waldo! <laughs> Penny beating Sheldon at dizzy math is also totally demoralizing for the guys and completely rewatchable for us. I'm okay. <laughs> Not okay. Get up, we can't lose in math. 37! Yes! <laughs> Season 5, Howard's Night of Survival Training. Howie, what happened to you? We did overnight survival training in the wilderness. <laughs> big fun, big, big fun. While lengthy monologues and stories are usually Sheldon's domain, this memorable moment was Howard's time to shine. Do you sleep in tents? No, I slept in a hole I dug in the ground with my bare hands. Howard's monologue to Bernadette, describing his night of NASA survival training, is one of the funniest moments of the entire series, let alone season five. But I did it, I survived. 
I wasn't sure I was going to when the sandstorm hit. <laughs> Just pulled my turtleneck up over my head and waited for death. Each time you think his night couldn't have gotten any worse, he ends up in the middle of a sandstorm and eating a butterfly. You're so brave. I'm proud of you. I ate a butterfly. <laughs> and no matter how many times you rewatch it, the image of Howard sleeping in a self-dug hole and being spooned by an armadillo is always funny. And at some point during the night, an armadillo crawled in <laughs> and spooned me. <laughs> Season 4, The Magic Trick. Well, it's not cool. It's a childish trick designed to confuse and intrigue simpletons. How'd you do it? When most people see a magic trick, they're amazed. When Sheldon watches Howard do one, he's at first dismissive of the magic, followed by a determination to figure it out, and then frustrated that he can't. Hey, I think I know how you did the card trick. Oh, oh please. If I don't know, you don't know. That's axiomatic. Come here. You're right. <laughs> there are so many great rewatchable moments in this magical episode, from Penny figuring out how the trick is done to Howard telling Sheldon to just believe in magic, you muggle. All right, this deck is rigged in some fashion. Yeah, fine, get another deck and I'll do the trick with that. So you're saying this is a regulation deck? I'm saying believe in magic, you muggle. <laughs> But the final scene is the perfect culmination of Sheldon's growing frustration as Raj surreptitiously helps Howard guess Sheldon's card one final and amazing time. All Sheldon can say is... Two of hearts. I hate you. <laughs> Season 3, Flashback. Sheldon's bazinga-filled ball pit scene is a very rewatchable Season 3 moment. Don't come here! Bazinga. <laughs> But we had to go with this flashback episode. For a group of nerds obsessed with comic books and superheroes, these moments combine to make something like their origin story. You've passed the first barrier to roommatehood. <laughs> you may enter. How did Sheldon and Leonard meet? When did Raj, Howard, and the couch into the picture? What is going on here? Uh, hey, Sheldon, this is Howard and Raj. They work at the university, too. Hey. Hey. How did the elevator break? All those burning questions and more are answered in this awesome fan-favorite flashback episode. And sure, it does lead to some timeline problems in the Big Bang-verse and doesn't all mesh with information we get in other episodes. But who cares? Leonard with the awful hairdo, Raj looking like an Indian Don Johnson, Sheldon's spot and an exploding elevator shaft are all too good to not rewatch. Give me that. What'd you do that for? I had plenty of time. You're welcome. Season 2, The Nimoy Napkin. How could it be anything else? To Sheldon, live long and prosper, Leonard Nimoy. <laughs> the napkin, Sheldon's reaction to it, the many baskets of bath items, and of course, the hug. The entire scene truly is so funny, sweet, memorable, and one of, if not the most talked about moments of the entire series, let alone the second season. He came into the restaurant, sorry the napkin's dirty, he wiped his mouth with it. <laughs> I possess the DNA of Leonard Nimoy. Even critics couldn't deny how wonderful it was, with one calling it golden and nearly perfect. And while Sheldon never did get that ovum and grow his own Leonard Nimoy, he and Penny did birth us the most rewatched moment of the season. All I need is a healthy ovum and I can grow my own Leonard Nimoy! Okay, all I'm giving you is the napkin, Sheldon. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Season 1, The Grasshopper. Okay, Raj, what will it be? Whatever you recommend. Uh, how about a grasshopper? I make a mean grasshopper. 
There's no denying the rewatchability of the first singing of the Soft Kitty song, especially given how big a part of the show the tune would become over the rest of the series. Soft kitty, warm kitty, little ball of fur. <laughs> Keep rubbing. However, the moment when Raj takes that sip of his drink and says, Where did my life go, Penny? <laughs> is, dare we say, a historic moment in the life of the show. Sure, it was only eight episodes into the first season, but Raj's mutism around women was already an important and well-established plot point of the series. Why don't you just meet this girl and see what happens? Haven't you been listening to me? I cannot talk to women! Um, Raj... No, no, let's see how long it takes him. <laughs> Our astounded reaction to those first alcohol-aided words was maybe only equaled by the shocked surprise several seasons later when he told Penny... It's not, I haven't had a drink since last night. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.